I would like to welcome you to my channel, That Middle-Aged Lady. In today's video, I wanted to talk about ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. So how common are they? What causes them? What is the difference between a fluid-filled cyst and a cancerous mass? And how are they diagnosed and treated? Although ovarian cysts are very common in women of menstruating age, so between the onset of puberty up until menopause, they become a lot less common once a woman enters the menopause stage of her life. This is thought to be due, in part, to most cysts being functional cysts, which is a cyst that forms on the ovaries and is related to menstruation and ovulation. There are two types of cysts that fall into this category. Corpus luteum cyst, which can develop after an egg is released during the menstrual cycle, but the sac holding the egg does not shrink as it is supposed to, therefore causing the sac to fill up with fluid. And a follicular cyst, which can develop when the follicle that holds the egg does not break open during ovulation to release it, therefore causing a cyst. Because both of these cysts are related to a woman's monthly cycle and ovulation, they are not typically seen in postmenopausal women due to them no longer having a period and ovulating. However, it is not impossible should something trigger one of the ovaries to try and ovulate, such as some type of hormone imbalance. Other causes of postmenal cysts are severe pelvic infection that has spread to the ovaries and fallopian tubes, PCOS, which is a condition where the ovaries create too much of the male sex hormone called androgens, endometriosis, which is a condition where endometrial-like tissue grows outside of the uterus, and hypothyroidism, which is a condition where your thyroid gland doesn't make enough thyroid hormones. Research shows that up to 17% of postmenopausal women will develop an ovarian cyst at some point. Some are found by accident during a scanner ultrasound that was ordered for a different reason, called an incidental finding, while others are found after a woman complains of symptoms, such as pain in that area or spotting. Although most cysts are benign, meaning non-cancerous, the risk of ovarian cancer greatly increases with age and is more commonly seen in postmenopausal women. Doctors believe this is due to the shift in balance of the hormones estrogen and progesterone once the ovaries begin to stop making them as a woman begins to enter menopause. According to the National Cancer Institute, approximately 20,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2023, and out of those women, approximately 14,000 died from this because disease. the symptoms of ovarian cancer aren't usually felt until the cancer has advanced, it is always important to stay in tune with your body and tell your doctor of anything that doesn't seem or feel quite right, including any pain or spotting. If caught early, ovarian cancer has a high success rate in treating it. So how is an ovarian cyst diagnosed, and how does a doctor know if it is just a simple cyst or a cancerous mass? Although a pelvic exam is a good tool to use to see if anything doesn't look or feel quite right, usually only a larger mass would be felt. For that reason, a vaginal ultrasound is the best tool to visualize not only seeing both of the ovaries, but the uterus and the endometrial lining as well. When trying to differentiate between a simple cyst and a cancerous mass, there are several things that your doctor will be looking for on a scan or ultrasound. A simple cyst, meaning non-cancerous, has the following features, round or oval, no solid component, anechoic, which means the mass is free from echo because there were no sound waves that picked up anything but fluid, smooth thin walls, no internal flow, which means no blood supply was seen through color Doppler, no septation, meaning the cyst is not divided, and no posterior acoustic enhancement, meaning no display of shadowing or enhancement. Your doctor will also be looking at the size of the cyst. Although an ovarian cyst in a postmenopausal woman that measures less than 5 centimeters has a 0 to 1% chance of being cancerous, it is important to note that any size ovarian cyst in a postmenopausal woman should be investigated to rule out ovarian cancer or the likelihood of turning into cancer. To help either confirm or eliminate the possibility of a cyst being cancerous, your doctor may also order a CA-125 blood test. This is to measure the amount of protein, cancer antigen 125, you have in your blood. This protein is found on most ovarian cancer cells and can secrete into the bloodstream. Normal level of CA125 is considered less than 35 units per milliliter. It is important to note that other things can raise your CA125 levels as well, such as endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, fibroid tumors, ovarian cysts, and liver disease. Symptoms of an ovarian cyst include dull ache in lower abdomen or back, pressure bloating swelling in lower abdomen, pain during intercourse, feeling full or loss of appetite, needing to urinate more frequently or with urgency, and if the cyst has burst, heavy bleeding and pain. Complications of ovarian cysts include rupture, hemorrhage, ovarian torsion, which is where a large cyst can twist a ligament going to the ovary, 
and cut off the blood supply to it. Treatment will depend on several factors, including the size of the cyst, where it is located, whether it's causing any symptoms, and whether or not it has any suspicious features or has the potential to become cancerous. For smaller cysts that do not cause any symptoms or are asymptomatic and do not meet the criteria for any type of malignancy, Usually your doctor will take a wait and watch approach, which is where you will go back in in four to six weeks to have another vaginal ultrasound done, perhaps another CA-125 blood test to see whether or not the cyst has stayed the same size, has grown, or perhaps gone away altogether. However, if the cyst is large, is causing any symptoms, or has any suspicion of malignancy, then surgery is usually recommended. If only the cyst is being removed, this can be done through a minimally invasive procedure called an ovarian cystectomy. Although risks are low, there is the potential for the cyst to return or for another cyst to form. If the entire ovary needs to be removed, this can be done through a procedure called an ophorectomy. The risks are low, however, it will also depend on how invasive the surgery needs to be and whether or not any cancer was found. I myself was just diagnosed with an ovarian cyst on my left ovary that measures nine millimeter by nine millimeter, which is just under one centimeter, so very small, perfectly round, doesn't meet any of the criteria for a cancerous mass. So my doctor is going to take the wait and see approach. So I go back in in about another three to four weeks to have another vaginal ultrasound done. And at that time, we will determine what exactly the course of treatment will be. I am postmenopausal, have been postmenopausal for over five years now. I was diagnosed with vaginal atrophy about a year ago and put on Vagifem as my course of treatment. I did ask my doctor if he felt that the Vagifem might have been causing the cyst or create the cyst, and he said he did not. However, I also was diagnosed with several fibroid tumors as well. And because I had an ultrasound done, a vaginal ultrasound done about two and a half years ago, and it didn't show a cyst in only one small fibroid tumor on my uterus, Obviously something caused these things to kind of pop out in the last couple of years and the only thing I can think of would be the Vagifem. So for that reason, I did stop using it currently just until we can get all of this figured out. I do notice when I would use it that the brown discharge I was experiencing would get worse. And so to me, that was kind of a correlation that there had to be some reason why that was happening. And so because I don't want the fibroid tumors to get any worse since I am in quite a bit of pain from them, Obviously, nor do I want this to turn into cancer or ovarian cancer. I just feel like it's safest for me not to take it at this time or not to use it at this time. After I go in for that second vaginal ultrasound, I feel like I'll know a lot more. And I do plan to talk to my gynecologist about the pain that I've been experiencing and this discharge, considering it's been for th about three months now and isn't getting any better. So obviously something's going on, especially since I did have a lot of other tests done that ruled every other thing out that it could have possibly been. So it definitely has to be something related to either this ovarian cyst, although very small, or these several fibroid tumors that I have. Other than that, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found the information I provided helpful. I find that when I go on YouTube and I'm looking for all of my questions to be answered, I feel like I have to go to several different um, channels to be able to get those questions answered. So I just really wanted to combine all of the possible questions together so that everybody could have hopefully everything answered just in one video. So again, I hope that everybody found that helpful. If you are a postmenopausal woman who was also diagnosed with an ovarian cyst, whether it's in the past or present, I would love to hear about it, and especially what your treatment was and how you're doing today. Or if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And as always, I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. Thank you again for joining me, and I will look forward to seeing you again next time.